saint. Righteous ponage. Greetings to the Arc Saint here, and in this video I'm going to show you another game I made for Tabletop Simulator. Um, this one's called Roaring Lions. It's another Christian themed game. I'm going to load it up here. This one took me quite a bit to get together. This game, in a nutshell, is like Candyland, uh, except that the devil's trying to kill you, and you have to put on the armor of God in, in order to survive. So, you, like Candyland, you start off at the uh, start location, and you're trying to get to the end location, which is basically the game. But it's way more complex than Candyland, and interesting. So the, the theme of the game is, it starts off at salvation, so when somebody gets saved, and then you have essentially the Christian walk um, all the way to departure, and that's when you leave this earth, that's when you die, and uh, you go to be with the Lord. So from, from the point when you get saved all the way to your departure, the devil's going to try to kill you. <laughs> He's, uh, it's called slain in the in the game. So the devil's going to try to slay you uh, either physically or or spiritually. He's going to try to mess up your walk for the Lord. And so in, in order to survive the wiles of the devil, uh, you need to put on the, uh, the full armor of God, uh, which, which here uh, each pawn gets their own their own deck of six cards. So if you're not familiar with the uh, armor of God, you can read Ephesians chapter 6. And <clears throat> there you go. You have a uh, helmet of salvation, uh, shoes of peace, sword of the spirit, shield of faith, belt of truth, and the uh, breastplate of righteousness. And so each piece of the armor of God will defend against two different attacks from the devil. So you see the breastplate of righteousness will defend against pride and vanity. Uh, shield of faith protects against fiery darts of the wicked and doubt. And right here, this is the uh, the attack deck where, where you'll get attacked throughout the game. Um, we get these guys all set up here. It's a four-player game. You can play with two or three players. Stand up. Nice. Uh, each player has a number, which is on their card at the top right, and that's going to be used to indicate who gets randomly attacked um, with these D6s. And so um, each space does something different. And, uh, oh, real quick, I, I drew everything myself uh, from scratch. I used, obviously, references. I'm not a very good artist, but I, <laughs> I used uh, a lot of references. I changed it up, and so all the artwork is technically mine. And the uh, artwork on the back of these is really just like an armor stand for all the pieces of the armor of God. So at the beginning of the game, everyone draws one card from uh, the armor deck. And so you're going to start off with something, and then you're going to roll, roll your die, uh, whoever goes first, and then you're going to move that many spaces on the board. And this space uh, here is the armor space, looks just like the card, which means you get another piece to the armor of God. And the other spaces, this here is uh, God speed, so if you land on this, you get to roll again. If you land on the yellow lion, it lets you use the other player's armor cards. So, um, there we go. Okay, so let's say you get attacked um, and you can't defend with, with your current pieces of armor. If another player is on the yellow lion space and he has the card you need, uh, it, it would be counted as, as though you had it. And so that's just a little bit of uh, teamwork, I guess you could say, uh, in this game. <laughs> so 
if you land on the, the white lion, you're safe and you can't be randomly attacked. Uh, the red lion is obviously an attack. When you land on a red lion, you, you get attacked by the devil and he will throw one of 12 different attacks at you. This one's slothfulness. Um, don't have the shoes of peace, so what would happen to this guy is he would take uh, one of his armor pieces and discard them. And if he gets to the point where he doesn't have any armor pieces and he gets attacked again, then he's slain. So that's, that's essentially how that works. And then you start back at the beginning, unless you have uh, the Belt of Truth, or there's another one, uh, oh yeah, the Shield of Faith. So if you die with, uh, with one of these cards on the top of your discard pile, you start at the nearest um, advanced start location. So you want to hold on to these and, and discard these, those two cards last. So if you do get slain, uh, you won't start all the way back from the beginning. You'll start either here or, or here. Whichever, whichever one you're closest to, that'll be your new start point. And then um, what you'll do is you'll, oops, you'll shuffle your deck, draw a new card, and then uh, start again when it's your next turn uh, from there onwards. Uh, yeah, yeah, so the random attack, if you land here, you're going to roll a d4, or you can just roll it like this, and that person is going to get randomly attacked. So you'll draw a new attack card, Deception, it's going to attack number two, uh, it has a Sword of Spirit which protects from Deception, and so he's good to go, but that's how random attacks work. This here is a snare. If you get caught in a snare and somebody lands on a random attack, you're automatically the target. So you don't have to roll a d4. Uh, you're automatically the target if you, if you land on a snare. And if there's multiple people on snares, then they're both the target. So um, that's how that goes. And then, uh, oh yeah, um, backslide. <laughs> so the opposite of Godspeed would be the backslide space. You land here, you roll again, and then you move that many spaces backwards. Um, there's a few of those. So, in addition to uh, the cards protecting you from different attacks from the devil, they also have special abilities uh, linked to them as well. So let's pull these cards up here again. Okay, so I already talked about uh, the Shield of Faith and the Belt of Truth, that if they're at the top of your discard pile, uh, you start at a advanced start location. Um, so that's their uh, special ability, I guess you would say. If you have the Shoes of Peace, snares do not affect you. And so if you land on a snare, but you have the Shoes of Peace, you're not actually counted as being in a snare. So if somebody else lands on a a random attack, then they would have to roll it like normal. Now you can still get hit by a random attack, but it's just not automatically going to happen because you're on the snare. The Sword of the Spirit allows you to pass through heretical overgrowths. And so there's a bunch of paths here. That it looks like they have vines growing all over them. If you have uh, the Sword of the Spirit and you land here, or or here, or any other other start location, because you can't go backwards. Um, you could, at the start of your next turn, uh, jump ahead. And so this can let you bypass a lot of the board if you, if you want, get you to the end quicker. Uh, they're just like shortcuts. And then finally, the, uh, the Breastplate of Righteousness in the Helmet of Salvation uh, if you have both of these cards, uh, you can re-roll your movement die once per turn. Say you're here, and then you roll a 1, 
and that would have got you attacked. You can instead roll again, and uh, oh, that's another one. <laughs> but uh, you can essentially avoid another attack, or, or it's like, wow, it's no one snake eyes. Yeah. So if you don't like your first roll, and you know it's definitely going to get you attacked or something like that, you can just roll again if you have these two, um, and it'll let you go one more time. You got to take the second roll though, and you also have to have both these cards. So one one card alone won't do it. All you got is this one card. You can't you can't do the uh, the re-roll. So that's like the combo, if you will. I think that's about it. There is some complexity to the game. Again, it's uh, based on all of these spaces and the cards you got, and other players can other players can either help you out, like if they're on the the yellow line space, uh, but they can also kind of screw you over too if, if they get the random attack. <laughs> so there's some fun elements to that. Now, if you are able to get all seven pieces. Or sorry, all six pieces to the armor of God. You're you're pretty much guaranteed to get to the end because no attacks uh, will be able to to affect you. So um, I'll show you real quick all the different attacks. Let me lay these out. Okay. Yeah, all things Christians have to deal with uh, in their life. And it can uh, destroy their faith, destroy their walk. But uh, if you if you're prepared, you can get through it, get stronger, so on and so forth. So these are spitballing uh, things that the devil will attack a Christian with to get him off course and uh, mess up his walk and slay him in the spirit, if you will. But yeah, if you have all. Uh, all six pieces to the armor of God, none of this can touch you. But it's kind of hard to do that. Uh, there, I think there's nine different spaces for the to, for a chance to get the armor of God. So you've got quite a quite a few chances. But uh, again, if you get attacked, you've got the right one. You can have to discard one. And if your your um, discard pile ever gets too full and you you get another um, piece of the armor you would just uh, shuffle your discard pile and then draw from that so if uh, if you run out of cards okay another important thing to note is um, there can be multiple people to, to reach the finish line so in Candyland first person that reaches the end wins. But in this, um, you can have multiple people reach the end. And to determine who the winner is, uh, it's whoever has the most pieces to the armor of God. So um, if yellow and purple get there, purple has more pieces, so purple would be the winner. Once somebody reaches the end uh, and somebody else is slain, they can't re-enter the game from the from the start or from the advanced location. So uh, there's there's that adds a little bit of tension uh, once once that happens and it makes deaths more uh, meaningful, I guess you could say. So, uh, but if more than one person does manage to reach the end, all you got to do is compare who has the most um, uh, cards to the to the armor of God, and uh, you know again purple would win. Oh yeah, so the, uh, this here is a, a scene from from the Bible, First Kings thirteen uh, twenty one through twenty six, with uh, the man of God who disobeyed the Lord, and God sent a lion to slay him. And I thought that was kind of fitting to the theme of the game, roaring lions. It's really only um, so the white lion is supposed to represent the Lord. Obviously, the red one's the devil. Over here, I wrote uh, the board's double sided, so flip it over, and this is true. There is another side to the board, so you just unlock it. Uh, boom. This is the first map that I drew. It was actually three different paths, so you can choose which one you want to go. 
Um, it's a lot faster of a game too if you want to do a quick, a quick game. This is the, the side to go. Um, but it's relatively the same thing except for each path only has one start location. They're advanced start location. So there's that. This The other side, way harder. This is a hard one to get through. <laughs> Yeah, each uh, corner down here, because I figure in, in here everybody would play from this side uh, instead of playing upside down on the board. Um, the the rule book, let me pop this out right here. Uh, yeah, too long, didn't read. It's like Candyland, but you adorn the armor of God to ward off the devil's attacks. That's essentially what it is. Um, explains the, the, the spaces and how to play and then it gives the scripture verses etc and where's the armor of god in the bible and you know, where's jesus referred to as line of the tribe of judah and you know salvation that's at the end if you're not saved because you have to be saved and then um, yeah that's pretty much it roaring lions i use the uh i don't know if this is like a shed level <laughs> it's supposed to be somebody's shed converted into a game room or something. I like this level. It's it's pretty nice, pretty cozy. Uh, yeah. So if uh, you're interested, check it out on the Steam Workshop, and you can download it, give it a go, and let me know if, if, what you think if uh, if you like it. So yeah, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, may the Lord be with thee.